Diversity of life. So life's been around now for about three and a half billion years, and uh, it's changed over time. And so now we have all the variety that um, you see around you. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So this is a chart of living things, the major categories of living things. And so this is supposed to be the original life form on the planet. Um, and you can see viruses dot, 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 because they're not really alive. Um, anyway, these are bacteria. And so I often call them you bacteria in my class, but I think the typical name for them now is just bacteria. And so these things in blue, bright blue here, are made out of um, a membrane. And then there's a cell wall outside of that cell membrane. And they have just a little bit of DNA in here and some ribosomes and some goop, the cytosol. And that is pretty much the story for them. They all do slightly different things. The cyanobacteria, for example, is photosynthetic. Um, and anyway, they, they all have kind of different jobs that they do. And there's a million different types of these, like gram positives. There's lots and lots of different gram positive bacteria, for example. But these are the major categories of bacteria. This group in red is the archae. They used to be called archae bacteria. Now we pretty much call them archae. These are bro both prokaryotic, this one and this one. So this, the red ones, are also made out of a cell membrane and a cell wall, and some DNA, and some ribosomes. Now the really crazy interesting thing here is that the DNA in here, um, a lot of that DNA is shared with eukaryotes. And so everything here, green and blue, light blue, these are eukaryotes, or eukaryota. Um, the, I guess the name is changed um, among some groups, among some people. Anyway, so there's actually, it looks like um, archaea and eukaryotes are more closely related than either of them are to bacteria, which is pretty interesting. So animals are here in blue, and plants are here in green. These are fungi. Everything else here, boom, boom, this one, this one, this one, this one, those are all protists, and there could be lots of branches off of here. It's just that we're more interested in animals, so that's why we have all these different kinds of animals drawn in here. So um, one thing that I want to get across is all these protists, um, there's actually as many different protists, like a, as in this protist might be as different from that protist as it is from all animals, for example. Um, and this, actually, this tree isn't quite right because it looks like animals and fungi are actually more closely related. So a lot of this stuff is still being worked out because um, they're still doing the genetic studies on it, but they it looks like they probably have this part right with the archaea and the eukaryotes um, being genetically more similar than they are to um, bacteria. So these are all the eukaryotes. They all have a nucleus. Um, they all have membrane-bound organelles. Here's another tree of life that is kind of cool. So this is showing you plants, and these are all different animals, and these are and these are other protists and stuff, although there really should be many more branches over on the side with all the various different types of protists, but they're making that small. But what I like about this, it's showing you archaea bacteria here, and it's showing you, I think that's what it's showing you, um, maybe the archaea bacteria, this one. But here's the U bacteria, and look at the lines over here. This one is showing you... Um, mitochondria. So mitochondria being taken in, these were early eukaryotes, and here's um, a bacterium, and it's showing you that some early eukaryote took in a bacterium, and so now that became mitochondria, and so everything above that, all the eukaryotes had um, mitochondria from then on. Some have lost it, but everybody at least started with it. And this is showing you some other bacterium, a cyanobacterium probably, came in to an early um, plant. And then from here, you got plants. So the plants have both the mitochondria and the chloroplasts, but the animals never got the chloroplasts. So it's showing you the symbiotic relationships here and how some of this stuff moved over to here and here. <coughs> Here's another tree of life that is showing you um, the same thing again, except this one. I do like how it's showing animals um, and fungi closer because they think that there's actually more DNA shared between animals and fungi than between either of them and plants. And I, I like this also because it's showing you um, the relative importance of all the different protists too. So here are animals. Actually, let's back up. This branch right here is the eukaryotes. So it says it right here. We've got animals and plants and fungi. 
And then the other group are protists. And look at how different these protists are. This one is more related to fungi than it is to this other protist. And here's another protist and another and another and another. And so there's these really, really variant things here. Here's a slime mold and microsporidia. Look at all these groups. This one, this one, this one. We put these all in the group protista because they're little and a pain to classify, apparently. <laughs> But look at how diverse they are compared to fungi, animals, and plants. So you are more closely related to a fungus and a microsporidia than a microsporidia is to a metamonda, whatever that is. Um, cool stuff. And it's also showing you how archaea bacteria, sorry, archaea and eukaryotes are more closely related than archaea are to bacteria, which is kind of interesting. This is also showing you how um, an early cyanobacterium came into... Um, right here and maybe it came into plants separately too that one's not super clear and it's also showing you this one this is probably mitochondria how they came in over here and that's why all of these have mitochondria except um it looks like some of them these yellow lines are the ones that lost mitochondria that's kind of bizarre these red arrows um, are showing you dna being transferred and so that happens sometimes you could have an archaea bacterium and it can actually take up dna from another or an archaea that could take up DNA from a bacterium. So sometimes there's DNA that's shared back and forth. You can have, um, there's various ways that DNA can be shared, um, but sometimes you'll just have bacteria that are dead and um, live archaea can take it up or vice versa. And there's also other processes called conjugation and, um, and other, you know, other ways that they can take up DNA, but it's kind of interesting that there's a little bit of, of mixing here. It certainly makes it confusing when you do DNA analyses and try to figure out how, who's related to whom. <coughs> now, some scientists now classify life this way based on evolutionary relationships. So take a look at this. Here's all life forms. So every life form fits in here somewhere. Here's bacteria, and here's archaea. Here's eukaryotes. Out of eukaryotes, we've got, where are we? Let's see. Apistaconta, animals and fungi. And then where are plants? Let's try to get this out of the way. Plants, plants, plants. Where are you? Here they are. Green plants. Whoops, sorry. Land plants. Um, RK plastidia or primoplantae. I like that name better. Um, anyway, <laughs> everything else is a protist. And they're saying that animals and fungi and conoflagellates are more closely related than this protist is to that protist or that protist or that protist. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think they're called kingdoms. I think they're called supra groups, something like that. I'm not going to have you memorize this because the words are too big, seriously, and because MCAS doesn't um, focus on this. But I just want to show you the system that we use really probably is not the best. It makes sense to us because we look around and see animals and plants and fungi. And we don't see any of these other diverse organisms. But the fact that they live and that you are more closely related to one of them than that one is to any of the other ones that we classify as protists, um, just interesting stuff. So I'm not going to ask you to know this one, but you might see it in a future class. I'm really not sure how college will treat um, classification anymore. I don't know how they do it. Okay, so here's what we are going to do. This is what I do want you to know. Domains. There are three domains. And so these are what I'm going to have you remember. There are bacteria, there are archaea, and there are eukarya. The reason that I have this line is that these two are um, protists. They don't have a nucleus, and this one does have a nucleus. So for our purposes, um, here's what I want you to know. Bacteria and archaea, those domains are actually both prokaryotes. They're in separate domains because you're actually more closely related to archaea, and archaea is more closely related to you than it is to bacteria. But they do um, both have no nucleus, which makes them prokaryotes. And they have no organelles with membranes or no internal membranes. And they are unicellular. They might um, string together, but they don't separate out into tissues. Eukarya, so that's plants, animals, fungi, and those millions of different types of protists. We have nuclei. We have um, organelles with membranes. So we all have mitochondria except the ones that have lost it through evolution. Some are unicellular, some are multicellular. So most animals and plants and fungi are multicellular, and most protists are unicellular. 
So here's another picture of it. This one doesn't really show you how these two are more closely related, but <laughs> it does, excuse me, does a nice job, I think, of showing you that all life is related and um, that bacteria are separate from archaea. And here are eukaryotes. Here's fungi and animals, and they're actually pretty closely related. Here's plants. Chromis, alveolates, rhodophytes. Anyway, all these lines are different protists, which is kind of bizarre. Okay, so first we'll look at archaea, then we'll look at bacteria, and then we'll look at um, eukaryotes. So archaea, they're cute, aren't they? <laughs> Actually, you know what, I think, um, I think I'm going to stop here. This will be a, a beginning for a new one.